House that tell you that she doesn't have her ducks in a row. There are so many kids in this country who look at places like museums and concert halls and other cultural centers and they think to themselves, well, that's not a place for me, for someone who looks like me, for someone who comes from my neighborhood. In fact, I guarantee you that right now there are kids living less than a mile from here who would never in a million years dream that they would be welcome in this museum. And growing up on the south side of Chicago, I was one of those kids myself. That's all, folks. I'll be right back on The Savage Nation. Join The Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust to protect my wealth. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. So the sneakiest president in American history who's working for forces we can only imagine is now trying to get fast-track authority on a secret trade deal. He will not dis disclose what's in the trade deal. No one has read the trade deal, and those who read it down in the basement of Congress have their notes taken from them by the sorority gang, so they can't share them with the press or the people. This is a dictatorship as sure as I'm sitting here. Obama's the, the most dictatorial president in American history. He was never fit for office. He was voted out of office in November. And now this lout has the nerve to demand fast-track authority for a new trade deal with Asia. And guess who's on board with him? McConnell and Boehner and the Republican establishment. And so we don't even know what's in the, uh, in the bill. Well, there's an article on uh, Infowars.com which says, Secret deal could contain a myriad of gun restrictions and ammo bans. Will UN-style gun control be rammed down our throats? This is what this sneaky socialist is doing. Exactly what you feared. Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell and Senator Orrin Hatch, another one, may soon give Obama authority to write gun control restrictions into a so-called trade agreement. Did you hear this? Fast Track Bill S-995. What's in it? No one knows. Will there be gun import bans? Will there be micro-stamping of firearms, ammunition bans, the full implementation of the anti-gun UN arms trade treaty? Illegal amnesty, which locks in millions of new anti-gun voters from Mexico and China. They, these items, including the anti-gun items, could be part of the secret trade agreement that Obama is getting ready to launch onto the Congress. Trade pact is called Fast Track. And what that means is that the president can write any form of gun control he chooses into a trade agreement. Import bans, amnesty, anything he wants. It can go well beyond trading with Asia. And by the way, this agreement doesn't give the dictator the need to go to two-thirds vote in the Senate. No, the sneaky, the sneaky demagogue in the White House, when completed, this agreement would only be subject to a majority vote in both houses. It cannot be filibustered. It cannot be amended. And the grand old party can't refuse to consider it. So what's in the bill? Reports are surfacing that the top secret draft giving Obama this dictatorial power over America contains an entire chapter with a European Union style provision allowing unlimited migration from Mexico into the United States. Just what we need. This would give Obama's dream machine just what they want. Just what they want to bring in millions of non-English speaking anti-gun socialist voters into the nation. So if you want to read the details of the Trans-Pacific Partnership trade deal from the most, uh, um, let us say, transparent president in communist Chinese history, you've got to be a member of Congress, and you've got to go to a classified briefing in the basement, and you've got to leave your staff and cell phone at the door. If you're a member of the Congress and you want to read the text, you've got to go to the sneaks, a room in the basement of the Capitol Visitor Center and be handed it one section at a time, being looked at as you read it, and then hand over any notes you make before leaving. This is what this demonic devil in the White House has done to this country. By the way, your congressman cannot discuss the detail of what they've read. Is that the country that you thought you'd be living in under this con man? This guy is out to get you any way he can. And it doesn't matter whether you're white, 
black, yellow, it doesn't matter if you're gay or straight. The man is a maniac. But the conservative Republicans uh, <clears throat> don't believe what I'm saying. Why? Because all they care about is the free trade side. All they care about is making Microsoft happy. All they care about is making General Electric happy. All they care about is, well, you get the picture. If it's got a dollar sign on it, the Republicans are for it. They could care less about the rest of the bill. Because the Obama administration is known to be the sneakiest uh, administration in history. We know about smuggling guns to Mexico, the IRS scandal. We know about him ignoring one law after another, bypassing Congress on matters such as immigration, the Bergdahl prisoner swap, the alleged economic benefits of TPP. All of them bypass the laws of the land. That is because Obama, by nature, is a lawless individual who thinks he is above everyone and above the law. The bottom line is you cannot let your representatives support the trade bill with Asia. And what's interesting here is that some liberals oppose it and some unions oppose it. And those supporting it are the so-called Republicans like Boehner and McConnell. Go figure that one out. That's what happens when you're blinded by greed. That's what happens when you're nothing but an errand boy for Microsoft or General Electric. Well, that's it for the first two hours of the Savage Nation. Victory Day, UK election, brother's birthday, giveaway berries, whatever. Another big hour across America. Be here or be nowhere. I'm Michael Savage. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, the Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture, and here he is, Michael Savage. Welcome back, hour number three, or if you're just joining the program, welcome. First two hours were uh, quite emotional and then moved into something quite different. Emotional in a different key or in a different <laughs> sense. Uh, I dedicated the show today to, um, well, it's May 8th, VE Day. It's the day that the Germans surrendered and find, signed a formal surrender agreement and the end of their horrendous war where Superman was defeated by every man. Just as ISIS one day will be defeated by every man if we get a leader who is capable of leading the every man against the vermin who are here in every state. How could you have them in every state without rounding them up or yanking them out by their hair? I don't understand it. The FBI says they're in every state instead of going and busting down the doors and pulling them out by their rotten beards and saying, screw you, you're not going to kill anyone here. What, is he? what do you mean they're in 50 states? What's the point of having an FBI if they can't do anything? You see why I get my blood boils. What a nation of idiots. Oh, the FBI, yo, we know we're following him for eight years. Then they let him blow up the Boston Marathon. They're following him for nine years. They let him shoot up a, a free speech event in Texas, which O'Reilly now supports on the other side. Not exactly, you know what I mean, but he attacks Pamela Geller. By attacking Pamela Geller, basically supporting ISIS. He tried to have it both ways, the leprechaun. So, yeah, you look back at World War II, great. What'd you learn from it? That if you had a president like Obama, you'd be speaking German. The rest of you would be a lampshade. That's what you learned from World War II. We would have, they would have had our signature on a piece of paper if we had Obama as a leader. That's what you'd have today. Write that one down. Make a note of it. If Obama had been the commander-in-chief at that time, we would have been signing the surrender sheet, not the Germans. That's topic number two. Topic three is the election in England. Oh, conservative Tories won. Yeah, won by a landslide. And who was their campaign advisor? Who? Jim Messina, who's Obama's campaign manager. What does that tell you, you fools? You don't understand how the cards are being shuffled. You're ready for Las Vegas. Go to Las Vegas with your, pay, your paycheck. So if you look back at World War II, it's a clear victory against evil. Pure evil, defeated by pure good. That's what World War II was. And I'll remind those of you who are ignorant and don't know history 
that after the defeat of Germany and their surrender, there was still a raging war in the Pacific because the Japanese, with their spirit of uh, Bushido, were not willing to give up. The military would not surrender. Their Air Force had been wiped out. Their Navy had been destroyed. But they were ready to fight for every square block, every square piece of land in Japan. They were going to fight with every man, woman, and child. And <clears throat> the estimates by the U.S. military who cared about the troops then was that it would have cost between, I think the number was 500,000 to a million troops would have died, our troops, taking the, the islands of Japan in a hand-to-hand -hand battle. And we had had uh, the development of the atomic weapons ongoing. We beat uh, Japan to the development of an uh, at uh, atomic bomb, and we beat Germany to the development of an atomic bomb, owing to the genius of America. And as a result, we bombed them first. And as a result, finally, Japan surrendered. And as a result, a million Americans didn't die. And I want to remind you again that many of you are children of men who had fought in Europe who were then going to be asked to go to Japan after living through the horrors of the European battles. They were going to then have to put them on ships across the Pacific and go fight the Japanese. You wouldn't be here had we not had Truman, true man. And by the way, Japanese were terrified when they heard that Truman became president after FDR died. They're very, they're very into symbolism. They said, oh, true man. The word true man, the word true man symbolized to them what was coming. And, and so, here come the truth. Well, he gave them the truth. Two atomic bombs. Now, no one's celebrating the death of innocent civilians. We know all about that, but it's better them than us at the time. That's the way he figured it out. And in my family, it's very close. I mean, it's a very personal thing. My father-in-law was a wonderful man, uh, Indiana farm boy, as I mentioned, went from the farm, I don't know what college, I think he went to Harvard, then Harvard Law, went in the Navy, gunnery officer, missed dying many times from enemy shells, men blown up in front of his eyes. He was getting ready to go to Japan. They were getting ready to ship him to Japan. Had he gone, he probably would have died. And... Uh, my family wouldn't be here today, but he died himself a couple of years ago. Terrible cancer. Charles Robert Rowe, we salute you on the Savage Nation. We also devoted the show to my deceased brother, my silent brother, and I read about that from my book, Train Tracks. Jerome, born May 8th, 1944, died October 12th, 1969. Uh, that was quite moving. And, uh, you know, we had people calling uh, with children in their family who are severely uh, I don't know the word they use today, it's special needs, you know, I, I, I'm from another generation. We said handicap, we didn't mean we're putting anyone down. That's all we said, if it was handicapped, I mean, well, we weren't negating anybody. That's what happened to them, that's how they were. So I dedicated the show to them and we got, so I thought, some very touching calls in the first hour. And then we talked again and we, we round, went round the back to the British elections, which are very personal to me. <clears throat> because I'm the only member of the American media, no matter how many posers you may listen to, none of them are banned from entering Britain. I'm proud to tell you I'm banned from entering Britain. And banned, by the way, by a, an evil, evil laborite government that I was told once they were out of office, my name would be taken off the list. Well, Cameron came along and he didn't do it. Now Cameron won again, and I know he still won't take my name off the list. And I've been trying to free my name from this list ever since 2009. It's man against government. You usually don't win, by the way. One man against the government doesn't win. Emily Dickinson said, "'Tis the majority in this, as all prevail, as sent, and you are sane. Demure, you're straightaway dangerous, and handled with a chain." Emily Dickinson, I'll read it again if you want to know what freedom of speech is. Actually, I opened this book, uh, Banned in Britain, very small publication. I did it to document the letters we found, the emails from Gordon Brown in England through the Freedom of Information Act. It cost me $400,000 from evil lawyers in England, and I never got off the list. They just took my money and ran. Typical, you know. But as a result of that campaign that I ran against the government, we discovered why I was banned from Britain. And uh, and it wasn't just about me and other Americans concerned about a cultural shift towards totalitarianism and their rights to freedom of expression that I have been waging this battle ever since 2009. 
There are other reasons. 